Andy Mogul. Before I start the show, I want to talk about what happened Thursday night. I, like so many of you, headed excitedly to the midnight premiere of The Dark Knight Rises. For people like us, the theater is a sacred place where we let filmmakers transport us into their worlds. So there's nothing more offensive than what happened in Aurora, Colorado. A deranged murderer, whom I won't name, defiled the movie-going experience and destroyed many lives. It's a tragedy I can't begin to understand, but my thoughts are constantly with the victims and their families. On today's episode of Indie News, the consumer camera that gives the pros a run for their money. YouTube introduces face blurring, several DIY tips, and the camera versus the human eye. I demonstrate camera tricks like high dynamic range and the dolly zoom. Zacuto, a company that makes camera equipment, recently pitted cameras against each other in their third annual camera shootout. Professional filmmakers reviewed the test footage and picked their favorites, but the camera names were kept secret. Until last week, when Zacuto revealed that the crowd favorite wasn't the Red Epic or the Sony F65, but the $700 Panasonic GH2. That's great news for me, a Panasonic GH2 owner, but it doesn't mean it's the best camera out there. This is a subjective taste test that has more to do with the lighting and cinematographer behind each camera. But the lesson here is that video shot on consumer cameras is pretty close to what the professionals can get on their expensive cameras. So if you're talented and set up beautiful, nicely lit shots, your camera is not holding you back. This week, YouTube added a new feature to their built-in video editor, face blurring, if you want to protect the identity of everyone in your video. Under Enhancements, click Additional Features, then apply the blur. And it automatically detects my face, blurs it, and follows it around. And what about this little guy? Here's a roundup of this week's best DIY tips. Dave Knopp recommends taking a photo of your gear to use as a simple checklist when you're in the field. Make Magazine uses a broomstick to build the world's cheapest monopod. And Shane Hurlbert shows us how to create this DIY fire lighting effect with a bunch of gooseneck stands, light bulbs, and dimmer switches. The links to these DIY projects are in the video description. Recently, I watched a short episode of PBS Off Book, which explored the ways photography can showcase what the human eye can't see, like micrography, time lapse, and slow motion. They even featured a few clips from Zach King. This got me thinking about the differences between cameras and the human eye. In many ways, our eyes are way more powerful than cameras, and that's a challenge that filmmakers must overcome. But there's also a lot of unique abilities that cameras have that the human eye can't match. The human eye is a lot like a camera. The pupil dilates to let more light in, like the aperture of a lens, and eye muscles focus light onto the retina, which is similar to a camera's sensor. Our eyes can see better in low light than most camera lenses, and we also have more dynamic range, meaning our eyes can handle bright and dark objects at the same time. Maybe you've seen HDR photography, which takes high contrast images and balances the exposure, more like what our eyes would see. To accomplish this, photographers use a technique called bracketing, shooting the same photo at various exposure levels and then blending them. You can do this with video, too. When I shot this room, the window was overexposed, so without moving the camera, I shot it again at a lower exposure. By layering these two shots together, I can draw mats to mix the two shots, or use the luma keyer to key out the brightest parts, and replace them with the other shot. In some ways, the camera is inferior to the human eye, but it also has a lot of inhuman capabilities like time lapse and slow motion. Even lens choice helps us manipulate the image. A fisheye lens makes a space look bigger than it is, and you'll see this a lot during the Olympics. A faraway camera zoomed way in crushes space, making it look like athletes and objects are really close together. There's a cool effect that uses this change in perspective, called the dolly zoom. Simply move the camera backward while zooming in to keep the subject the same size in the frame. It's disorienting, just like in this shot from The Lord of the Rings. On a DSLR, it's difficult without an electronic zoom, but even a prime lens and some digital zoom in post can accomplish this effect. 
Finally today, I love movie trailers, but so often they're completely formulaic, and as this YouTube user points out, 3D movies are even worse. Arrows will fly at your face. That hilarious video starts off our playlist today, followed by Dave Knopp's tips for keeping track of your gear, and the episode of Off Book that features more things cameras can do that the human eye can't. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again live this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at youtube.com slash indie mogul. See ya.